The puppet's <laughs> here. that you apply is very important because right now zero pressure you're very relaxed the moments that they're going to be forward I have to apply pressure and they have to be again it's pretty quick and direct leave it leave it hey leave it hello so they're just doing pretty good they're very alert that's what I'm doing I'm, bare, I'm not holding them that's very important now they're pretty calm I'm gonna push them a little more and make them lay down because that, that's really self-control, like naturally they want to go to you so that like he's so I'll wanted it. They, they run to my face. Yeah, because I'm already like, I'm already holding them back, but I'm holding them back to like confidently telling them that they have to listen. So what you see is I'm not holding them back. Yeah. But now that they're like this, when I'm, again, they go down, next, down. So see how he doesn't want to listen because he's focused on you. Next, down. We reinforce it. Shh, hey, hey, hey. Down. Now this is pushing them a little bit more because it's really hard for them to lay down when they want to go. You know, it's already hard for them to just stay back. Now, shh, let's see if I can correct her at the same time. Down. With her, you just little pressure like that. It's chicklish on the side. So with her, it's gonna be a different type of correction. Hey. So she can start right from a young age, like hey. The same thing when she does that, it will and I'll show you the technique. It's two fingers go on the side, and then you have to coordinate yourself between all of them. Hey, Max, down. And we'll give them a break. But see, I'm leaving them there because it's very important that they learn to hold themselves there. So if they feel if they feel like I'm physically holding them back, the moment they're breathing to relax, they go. So that's why they have to build the understanding that your command. Hey. Shh. Down. So she is more. This one is more insecure. He's younger. And then you breathe. Like the moment, the one that you can tell when they relax, you have to relax. So even taking a deep breath, because they'll sense that. If you're tense, they get more tense. They're just holding the leash back, they're going to pull harder and harder and harder. Because they just they know. They know we that they feel that. that. When people come in, even if we put the collars and we'll try to hold them back and it's like yeah. fighting and they push harder to try to yeah, run to because, the person. So see what what, what this does is it, you're controlling their minds. So they really feel like, oh I have to respect this guy because I got their attention. And also the fact that I just drop the leash and walk away, the worst that can happen is they're going to move and I'm going to redirect them. But it already shows like a lot of confidence from the handler. So they are more respectful because they immediately feel like, oh, this person knows what they're doing. I have to respect them. If I'm, a lot of things that people do wrong is blocking, doing something like this or holding the leash back mm -hmm. because they feel like you're insecure about your ability to hold them back, like to control them, to really make them like, you know, have to respect you. When you act confident, just like act like you know. So what, what you have to do is like learn the techniques. You learn how to make them hold themselves back. Which I showed you with a little pressure, make them sit, make them lay down, firm command. Once they realize that you do that, and you just go. Because again, I know the only thing they can do is move and I'll put them back there. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because it just, it does a shift in their mind, or like how they think. So they already feel, you know, like they don't want to challenge you. They're like, oh, this person is going to reinforce that anyways. Like, I'm not going to get away with it. Even with the whining, if you want to come here, can do a little, okay, no. It's a little bit of pressure. Because you know that can escalate, and that's not bad. It's like it, it, German Shepherds are very vocal, and the way he's doing, like very little, I wouldn't even like worry about it. But if you see it building up, especially with more dogs, um, you want to go and redirect. Because if that keeps escalating, it's gonna go to them breaking the command. Because the whining is a sign of like being a little anxious, being excited, being eager to, to you know go do what they're thinking that they want to do. So again, when you ask if you keep going, the next step is to go for it. You know, it's, that's that's basically his warning that he's like, he wants to go. To, yeah, he, he is. He's getting excited. So if you interrupt, it just 
resets him so he's not thinking about go. He's thinking more like relaxing. But you just kind of go that way towards the couch. Yeah, and just just get rid of the things down like. Um, because these are just like new distractions, you know, they, they're, yeah. they're having to control themselves. Now, when someone comes over, that should never be a release command for them to go to them. Or that should never be the time where like, oh, now they're ready to be petted. Mm -hmm. If you really, shh, feel like this, you... So the nice thing is with the sounds that I use, the shh, snapping, this, or hey, all those things is what's going to get their attention. Hey. So you won't have to use the pressure forever. The pressure just for them to associate that with this, the sounds that I make. So then I can just use the sounds to get their attention. What I was saying is, once someone comes over and you put them in a the down and they reinforce them, like just like we're doing now, we're going to get to practice with my friend. And then if we have other people coming over, you will see it will be the same process. But again, we're never going to say, okay, now you guys are free to go. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, they're always going to expect and wait for that. See how they're really on high alert still. Yeah. They're not ready to go to sleep or lay down and relax. They're waiting for me to release them. So the longer we do, the more practices, you know, and the longer we practice with not releasing them, the more they go into a, a relaxed, a calm state of mind. When someone is over, they're never going to get attention. They don't need to expect that. You know, it's better for them to learn that they don't get affection from people. In the long run, once they're really calm, you can have someone go and pass them. Mm -hmm. Or even to release them, it's never like, okay, you can go to the person now. You know, the tone that they're going to use is very important. Like, right now they're not calm enough, but if they were and I was going to release them, I would come here and very calmly, like, apply pressure, okay, free. So very, very calm. Not directed towards the target, which is you right now. That's mm -hmm. what they're excited about. So it's more like release them and then make them go away. If they go to you, I redirect them again. So even though, so they can eventually be free. You know, they don't have to be in a down if you have a visitor, but they lose that focus on the person that's here. And instead, they can walk around. They can go to the couch. They don't, you know, they're no longer aiming at that person that is that walked into the house. But before you get to that level, it should be a lot of this. Just make them stay down until they give up. Like they just lose interest in, in you and then you can give them attention or release them here i am practicing with the training that they have just received in the last 10 to 15 minutes the first practice was with me coming in i'm a distraction they have never met me before they were very excited as you guys saw in the beginning of the video then we had the wife coming home from work so it was a real life experience that they deal with on a daily basis when she goes to work and then she comes back at the end of the day so you guys saw that they were really excitable and now we have a brand new person coming into the house which they would normally act like they were acting in the beginning of the video but you guys see now that they are really trying to hold themselves themselves back so this goes to show that they are starting to realize that they have to respect the handler in this case me eventually it's going to be the owner handling them but it just goes to uh, show them that they need to hold them themselves back and pay attention so you see that they realize that it was a new visitor they were interested at first but then they become a lot less interested because they know i don't want them to be so excitable keep in mind that the colors that they have on you see the prone colors are the same exact tools that the owners have been using so far i have not added or taken away any of the tools that they have currently been using the only thing that I'm doing different is the techniques that I'm using. That goes to show you guys that using the colors and the tools correctly is extremely important. These dogs have no new colors or nothing different on them. The only thing different is the techniques and look at the difference on how they respond to the training versus how they were just ignoring the prone collar before. Maybe not completely ignoring, you get a little bit of results but not to this extent. It's very important that you learn how to use the tools correctly. Alright guys, we're here. Today is uh, the following day from a training session with these dogs. And uh, I'm doing a little follow-up to see how they are responding to the training so far. They had only had one lesson, so... The biggest problem they have is with the dogs rushing at the door and getting really excited. So I taught them how to send the dogs back to create space and let's see how they're doing. And what, what you need to do is you need to back up. You correct when you back up. Don't, don't keep blocking them. Just, just put your hand. 
Now if you're wrong, you have to go that correction. Go that correction. Correction. The shunt just lift up this way. Now shift them them back. And the moment they go, go walk into the middle. So you want to see the body when it's going straight back. Like that. And then you go. So I mean, they just really, really good, and I'm mm -hmm. being like the first time with her. No, 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 leave it. Okay, so they just really good. Um, the only thing is that, like, see, when he's passing you, you send him back, and then you relax and walk away. Because if what happens is the way that you were standing here before, like really watching and blocking them, they're gonna start to they're gonna start to try to go around you. And also the other thing is the moment that you finally breathe and relax, then they think they're free. Because you're teaching them to only respect your energy here. You're blocking them with your energy. So you have to relax and kind of show them that it doesn't matter what you're doing, even if you're not like you can be facing this way and you still can correct them. You know, they have to get that idea from you back. They have to respect what you told them, which is just to stay back there. And they may make a few mistakes, but it's okay because they learn from those mistakes. But if you keep trying to prevent the mistake by staying right there, they don't have a way to learn. They just think that the moment you walk away, they're free. Mm -hmm. you know? So, back. But like I said, they did really good. So we're going to have uh, him knock at the door, and then we're going to make sure that the dog stay back there. And same thing when he comes in. Um, if they are stepping forward a lot we're going to go back like this and redirect but if they're just staying right there if i'm going to get behind the line it's okay all right can you knock at the door and then ring the doorbell Being only the first time like practicing this since yesterday, uh, they're doing really good. You see that he is like basically thinking that he this is his job to to go and check out who's coming in. He's the older one, so you can tell that his his uh, mentality is like you're preventing me from doing my job. So he he's confused. That's what he realizes that this doesn't have to be his job to be a homer. And then the other guy Dex. He's just a little more confused of why he's even back there. He's not even aiming at who is in. He's just like, can I go now? Can I, you know, can I be done? And the same thing, uh, as we practice this more, back. So when they're being pushy, you wanna definitely practice that because you can tell there's a lot of like him, you know, putting the paw there, just trying to see if he, if he gets away with it. Uh, the more you let him keep flowing this way, the more he's going to do that. Hey, back. Being that it's so new, it's gonna be your job to be really on top of it until they realize that every time they step in this way, you're redirecting them.